Welcome to Radical Cram School. We're gonna learn about social justice, revolution, and how to be powerful in the body that you have. Radical Cram School! Why doesn't she have a mouth? The people who created her didn't want Asian girls. Um, to speak up about their, who they are. Yeah, to speak up about who they are. It's generally agreed upon that some of the most repulsive stuff that we can imagine includes kids as the victim. Whether it's your local priest giving little Tommy a little bit too much attention, or some hey, African people. warlord training to turn them into child soldiers. The notion of preying on children is, to most of us, incredibly disgusting. So it's really no wonder that a show like Radical Cram School that's actively trying to radicalize little kids is getting all sorts of hate. Or is it? I'm Dr. Lehman, and today's topic is child indoctrination. I think I don't really have to tell you what this lovely show called Radical Cram School is all about. If I were to do the usual YouTube skeptic routine, I'd point out how Christina Vong, the woman behind the show, is your usual weird social justice E type, performing a ritual funeral for the white penis. Goodbye. <laughs> or dressing up as a vagina and screaming about stuff. Not just a hole! Not just a hole! I'd point out how obviously staged all of this is. I'd omit some of the genuinely touching and good moments. When Downey the bully, bully was calling uh, Hannah Rochelle Ching Chong Chu or things like yeah. that, has anybody ever had that happen to them? Mm -hmm. Well, my dad said yeah. that happened to them. He said he didn't like it, it was a mean thing. And then I'd segue into a lengthy, emotional argument about something, something communism, secretly hoping that I crack the 10 minute mark to get some more of that lovely, lovely ad revenue, and to give you, my dear viewer, the warm, fuzzy feeling you only get when an internet person agrees with you. But, but let's not do any of that. Let's do something completely different. We all know at least a couple of examples of people indoctrinating little children into their religious or political worldview. So I want you to imagine one such regime. Imagine how it comes to power, how absolute it is, how everything that dares to stand against it is considered evil and often met with violence. Imagine how the children are forced into the system, not only by the subjects they are taught at school, but also through more overt means like having to swear oaths of fealty every day and having to face punishment from their parents and expulsion from their peers if they dare to stand against the regime. Imagine then how those children are so deeply convinced that their cause is righteous that once they grow up they are willing to kill and be killed in the name of their ideology and then imagine how they in turn force their children down the same path. And now let me ask you, what ideology did you think of? Comment down below. I guess it was something like National Socialism, Communism or maybe Islam. And you'd be right with guesses like that, but there's one more that's very important to me. Let me rewind here a little bit and change the background footage so you know what I mean. So I want you to imagine one such regime. Imagine how it comes to power. How absolute it is, how everything that dares to stand against it is considered evil and often met with violence. Imagine how the children are forced into the system, not only by the subjects they are taught at school, but also through more overt means like having to swear oaths of fealty every day and having to face punishment from their parents and expulsion from their peers if they dare to stand against the regime. Imagine then how those children are so deeply convinced that their cause is righteous that once they grow up they are willing to kill and be killed in the name of their ideology and then imagine how they in turn force their children down the same path. And now imagine that regime is us. Whether it's a presidential republic, constitutional monarchy, parliamentary republic or whatever else there is. Whether we like it or not and whether our capitalist democratic republic establishments are actually good or not, our current establishments are just as ideological as a monarchy or a caliphate. It's just that most people don't to realize that, because the greatest trick an ideology can pull on you is to convince you that it's not an ideology, but truth, nature, reason, divine will or something similar. And that is exactly what we have been working on for the past 100 to 200 years, depending 
on country. From the day you are born, you are subject to this very ideology. But no one will ever call it like that. Instead, you'll only hear some, quote, rational excuses. Don't question the teachers in school too much. They may give you bad grades. Don't be too open about your opinions if they don't agree with the political establishment. You may have trouble finding a job. Don't break the law, no matter how stupid and senseless it is, because that's immoral. Don't be satisfied with what you have, always work for more. How else will you support your family? Don't be politically too active, you don't want people to think you're crazy. Don't question why you have to work at least 40 hours a week, you could lose your job. Don't complain about the fact that almost every party you can vote for will maintain the status quo, will kill people in your name and will support too big to fail companies with your money. Don't complain about that, it's the best we have. And I'm sure that when you think about it, you'll find dozens, if not hundreds, of examples of this sort of self-enslavement. Admittedly, we did see tremendous improvements over the last 100 to 200 years, and I don't know if we could have done that without our lovely capitalist democratic republics or capitalist nations in general. But just because something is good doesn't mean it's not ideological in nature. Because, spoiler, basically everything political is. Do you honestly think that the clearly totalitarian schooling system of the Eastern Bloc considered itself ideological when they rewrote biology and history books to suit a Stalinist worldview? No, they were just correcting capitalist propaganda and teaching you the, quote, actual truth of the matter. Too often when people complain about children being indoctrinated into something, they are not actually upset that the kids are being manipulated, even if they may say so at times, but that the kids are being manipulated into something that they personally don't like. And they tend to forget how they learned about the French Revolution and how great and important it was, how they learned about the spring of nations and how important democracy is, how anti-democratic movements are the ultimate evil. They forget how basically everyone and everything, with small, barely noticeable gestures, pushed them to remain within the capitalist republic framework. We have internalized the system to such a degree that we think it's normal, that this is how it was, how it should be, and how it always will be, when in truth, our current establishments are pretty damn young on average, some of them much younger than a hundred years, and that's the core message of this video. Whenever you see someone like Miss Wong in her radical cram school, don't get upset about her. Don't scream at her, don't insult her, but use her instead. What can her behavior teach you about yourself? Insult Wong in her radical cram school. And that's the core message of this video. Whenever you see someone like Miss Wong in her radical cram school, don't get upset about her. Don't scream at her, don't insult her, but use her instead. What can her behavior teach you about yourself, about the country and the system that you live in? Are there maybe similarities between what she's doing and what we're doing? And if so, why? Now with all of that said, let me get one thing straight. I like democratic republics on average, even after looking at them very, very critically, and even with the understanding that I had very little choice when I was a child, I still like them. They are a good platform for improvement. But that doesn't mean that A, we won't figure out something better eventually, and more importantly, B, that they are free of ideology. By the way, if either of those statements triggers a strong emotional reaction in you, I have some bad news regarding indoctrination for you. We didn't finally find a way out of the shackles of ideologies, we simply managed to find a new ideology that seems to be working out better than most others we tried, and now we are really deeply concerned with maintaining it and with defending it against anything that may potentially threaten it, when in fact we should be trying to learn from just about everything there is out there. So the next time you see someone indoctrinating children into something you don't like, stop and ask yourself this. What can this teach you about yourself? Is this maybe something that I too am guilty of? And the next time someone tells you how glad they are that they were never ideologically indoctrinated as children, that their parents taught them morals and values without ideology, well, tell them to go find the nearest spiky object and shove it up there. I'm Dr. Lehman, glad you tuned in. And as always, Babylon prevails.
A special thank you goes out to all of my patrons, and a double special thank you goes out to my top tier patrons. Anonymous, The Harry Soap, Arianus, Radical Enlightened Alt Centrist Anarcho Fascism Will Prevail, My Dudes, Screaming Dante, Reading My Messages Even Though It Pisses Off Your Friends, Thank You Layman, very sociological. <laughs> Data. Very tata duke progredi. Miranda. Fuck. Knarl. Fuck you, Data. Hippity hoppity. Brave is my property. Caustic dreamer. And Conte. Tune in next time when I snort a whole bag of ideology.